Greetings, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's topic is the Day of the Lord. That's the Day of the Lord. The prophets of the Most High warned that in the latter days, there would be a time of tribulation when the earth as we know it would be destroyed. Many of them repeated the same things, so, for the sake of brevity, this teaching will not include every single scripture that relates to the day of the Lord. Also, the prophecies are not given in chronological order, so it can be quite difficult to arrange the order of events as they are expected to unfold. Nevertheless, in this teaching, which is the first of a three-part series of end-time prophecies, I will do my best to reveal these prophecies in a way that makes it clear what we should expect in the day of the Lord. In this teaching, I will be answering the following questions. 1. What exactly is the day of the Lord? 2. What sign can we expect before the day of the Lord comes? 3. What will happen in the day of the Lord? 4. Is there any way to escape destruction in the day of the Lord? 5. What should righteous Israelites do in the day of the Lord? And 6. How will the nations be judged in the day of the Lord? Question number one. What exactly is the day of the Lord? We'll find the answer in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And I will be reading from the Brenton Septuagint translation. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 reads thus. And at that time, Michael the great prince shall stand up that stands over the children of thy people. Michael is the archangel. He is the commander of the army of the Most High God. So that gives us a clue what this will be about. And there shall be a time of tribulation. Such tribulation as has not been from the time that there was a nation on the earth until that time. So Michael, the great prince, is rising up with the army of the Most High God and they're going to bring tribulation, destruction on this earth like it has never been seen before. At that time, thy people shall be delivered even everyone that is written in the book. So it's at the time of tribulation that the Israelites will be delivered from those who have taken us captive. That's because the tribulation, also known as the day of the Lord, is a rescue mission. The purpose is to put an end to wickedness and to deliver the Israelites from those who have taken us captive. Amos chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. That's Amos chapter 5, verses 18 to 20, and it reads thus. Woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. What is this day of the Lord to you, whereas it is darkness and not light? as if a man should flee from the face of a lion, and a bear should meet him, and he should spring into his house, and lean his hands upon the wall, and the serpent should bite him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? And is not this day gloom without brightness? The enemies of God are going to be running for their lives in the day of the Lord. But there is no escaping what is to come in this day. And that's why it says it's like a man running from a lion but meeting a bear and running into his house but meeting a serpent. There's no escaping in the day of the Lord. 
The day of the Lord is a period of tribulation like the world has never seen. Isaiah chapter 13 verses 9 to 10. Isaiah chapter 13 verses 9 to 10 reads thus, For behold, the day of the Lord is coming which cannot be escaped, a day of wrath and anger to make the world desolate and to destroy sinners out of it. The purpose of the day of the Lord is to destroy sinners out of this world. The wicked will be completely destroyed in the day of the Lord. For the stars of heaven and Orion and all the host of heaven shall not give their light and it shall be dark at sunrise, and the moon shall not give her light. So the day of the Lord is going to begin with complete darkness. That's how we are going to know that the tribulation has begun. When the sun stops shining, and the moon stops shining, and the stars stop shining, there will be complete darkness. Then the destruction, the desolation will begin. And it's at that point that it will be too late to repent. So the sinners must repent now before it's too late. Question number two. What sign can we expect before the day of the Lord comes? Malachi chapter 4 verses 3 to 5. Malachi chapter 4, verses 3 to 5, reads thus, And behold, I will send to you Elias the Thespite, this is Elijah the prophet, before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes, who shall turn again the heart of the father to the son, and the heart of a man to his neighbor, lest I come and smite the earth grievously. So Elijah the prophet has been commissioned to teach Israelites to love one another. For hundreds of years, our Christian slave masters taught us to love our enemies and to hate our own people. This is why many Israelites feel so comfortable cursing and attacking their own people while admiring the oppressor. This is also why so many Israelites reject their own people and choose to marry the other nations. They hate their people. The time has come for Israelites to love one another and to marry our own people as commanded in the law of the Most High. This is what Elijah has been commissioned to do, to encourage the Israelites to remember and love our people and to marry our own people. He's turning the heart of the fathers to the sons. He's turning the heart of the man to his neighbor so that they can be loved in Israel. Verse 5. Remember the law of my servant Moses, accordingly as I charged him with it in Choreb for all Israel, even the commandments and ordinances. This is what Elijah teaches the people to remember the law of Moses, to do that which is written in the law. Question number three. What will happen in the day of the Lord? Isaiah chapter 13, verses 3 to 8, and verses 11 to 16. That's Isaiah chapter 13, verses 3 to 8, and verses 11 to 16. It reads thus, I give command, and I bring them. Giants are coming to fulfill my wrath rejoicing at the same time and insulting. So the Most High is going to send giants 
to destroy his enemies, to destroy those who have taken his people captive. Verse 4, a voice of many nations on the mountains, even like to that of many nations, a voice of kings and nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts has given command to a warlike nation to come from a land afar off, from the utmost foundation of heaven. The Lord and his warriors are coming to destroy all the world. This is what's going to happen in the day of the Lord. It's a rescue mission to deliver the Israelites from captivity. Verse 6. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is near. We have already received the sign of Elijah teaching the children of Israel to come back together, to love one another, to marry our own people, and to keep the commandments of the Most High God. So we know that the day of the Lord is near, and destruction from God shall arrive. Shall means it's guaranteed to happen. Verse 7. Therefore, every hand shall become powerless because the enemies of God cannot resist these things that will happen on the day of the Lord. They will be powerless to defend themselves and every soul of man shall be dismayed. They'll be pulling their hair out. They'll be running around like headless chicken and they can't do a thing to defend themselves. Verse 8, the elders shall be troubled and pangs shall seize them as of a woman in travail and they shall mourn one to another and shall be amazed and shall change their countenance as a flame. But they'll be powerless to help themselves. Verse 11, and I will command evils for the whole world. This is worldwide destruction. And will visit their sins on the ungodly. Because it's those who break the commandments that the Most High is coming to destroy with his army of giants and I will destroy the pride of transgressors. They are very prideful people who like to boast about how they break the commandments and nothing happens to them. Well, the Most High in that day will destroy the pride of transgressors and will bring low the pride of the haughty. So humble yourself before it's too late. And they that are left shall be more precious than gold tried in the fire. That's because very few will remain. The majority of the earth population will be destroyed in the day of the Lord. It continues, and the man shall be more precious than the stone that is in Sophil. So just like gold is very precious, and these precious stones are so hard to find, men shall be hard to find after the destruction in that day, because very few will be left. Verse 13, for the heaven shall be enraged, and the earth shall be shaken from her foundation. This is the entire earth being shaken. Not a little tremor in some country. Not even a great earthquake in some remote location. Everybody on planet earth will feel the shaking. And by this time, it will be too late to repent. Because of the fierce anger of the Lord of hosts in the day in which his wrath shall come on. And they that are left shall be as a fleeing fawn and as a stray sheep. And there shall be none 
to gather them. So they're going to be like stray sheep without a shepherd. They don't know what to do with themselves. It continues, so that a man shall turn back to his people, and the man shall flee to his own land. Now, I'll make it clear. This is a rescue mission for the Israelites, which means that no Israelite is going to be put to death at this point. The giants that are coming are coming for those non-Israelites that enslaved the Israelites. They are coming for our captors. They are not coming to destroy us. Verse 15. For whosoever shall be taken shall be overcome. And they that are gathered together shall fall by the sword. This is why every man shall turn back to his own people. And a man shall flee to his own land. People are not going to be gathering together in this melting pot that we see in many countries today. And they shall dash their children before the eyes. The giants are going to take the children of the ungodly and dash them before their eyes. And they shall spoil their houses and shall take their wives. This is what they did to the children of Israel. Therefore, it is being recompensed upon their own heads. This is their tribulation. This is a day of the Lord. When the Most High sends his army of giants to kill the ungodly and the prideful, no Israelite will be killed. Remember, this is a rescue mission. These giants have been commissioned to kill the enemy, to kill those who have taken the Israelites into captivity, not to kill the Israelites themselves. Also, the Most High has a remnant of Gentiles, meaning non-Israelites, who will not be killed. They are not ungodly. They are not prideful people. Now let's learn more about the Most High's army. Joel chapter 2, verses 4 to 11. That's Joel chapter 2, verses 4 to 11. It reads thus. The appearance is as the appearance of horses. So these giants in the Most High's army, they are big and powerful, like horses are big and powerful. And as horsemen, so shall they pursue. As the sound of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, and as the sound of a flame of fire devouring stubble, and as a numerous and strong people setting themselves in array for battle, these men are coming for war. Before them shall the people be crushed. They are going to destroy what's in their path. This is why the nation will be powerless to fight against them. Every face shall be as the blackness of a cauldron. Because the nations are going to be thinking, we don't know what to do. What should we do? Verse 7. As warriors shall they run, and as men of war shall they mount on the walls. So they're going to be able to run up and climb upon the walls. And each shall move in his right path and they shall not turn aside from their tracks, and not one shall stand aloof from his brother. This is complete order. This is a military formation that will be marching into the lands of our enemies and destroying them as they go. They shall go on way down with their arms, and they shall fall upon their weapons, yet shall they in no wise be destroyed. So even if their own weapons were to cut them, they would not be destroyed. They'll heal. So the weapons of the enemies that will be inferior will not be able to destroy the Most High's army because they are invincible. Verse 9. They shall seize upon the city, and run upon the walls, and go up 
upon the houses and enter in through the windows as thieves. They're going to go into houses and see who is in there. And if anyone is found who is ungodly or prideful, if those of the other nations be found who are not the most high people, they will be put to death. Verse 10. Before them the earth shall be confounded and the sky shall be shaken. We're going to have asteroids falling and the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their light. This is something that we've already read before, that the day of the Lord will be complete darkness. People won't be able to see where they're running because there'll be no light. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his host, for his camp is very great. For the execution of his words is mighty, for the day of the Lord is great, very glorious. And who shall be able to resist it? No one will be able to resist the destruction that will be caused by the Most High and his army in the day of the Lord. Question number four, is there any way to escape destruction in the day of the Lord? We've already read that the enemies of the Most High will be powerless to resist his army. So as they're unable to resist, which is fight back successfully, is there a way to escape that destruction? Isaiah chapter 2, I'll read verse 10. And verses 17 to 19, that's Isaiah chapter 2, verse 10, and verses 17 to 19. It reads thus, Now therefore enter ye into the rocks, and hide yourselves in the earth, for fear of the Lord, and by reason of the glory of his might, when he shall arise to shake terribly the earth. The rich and powerful of this world are fully aware that this tribulation, the day of the Lord is coming, and they know that the only way to escape destruction is to hide themselves in the earth. And this is why they build these underground bunkers to hide themselves. The only way to escape this destruction is to hide yourself in the earth, to enter into the rock. But why not take the safer route and simply worship the Most High only and keep his commandments now that you can. Verse 17, And every man shall be brought low, and the pride of men shall fall, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So no more Yahweh Shai, no more JC, no more Allah and Buddha, and all these false gods and idols that the Israelites like to exalt because the Most High God alone shall be exalted in that day. When Christians and Christianites realize that JC is not coming to save them from the destruction in the day of the Lord, they will not exalt him anymore. The Most High only shall be exalted in the day of the Lord. Verse 18, And they shall hide all idols made with hands. All the crucifixes will be hidden, having carried them into the caves, and into the clefts of the rocks, and into the caverns of the earth, for fear of the Lord, and by reason of the glory of his might, when he shall arise to strike terribly the earth. So the Christians will be hiding in caves, in the clefts of the rock, in the caverns of the earth, because there will be no rapture and the false god and idol of our Christian slave masters is not coming back to save them from the Most High God and his army of giants. Isaiah chapter 24, I'll be reading verse 1, verses 3 to 4, verse 6, and verses 16 to 19. That's Isaiah 24, verse 1, 
verses 3 to 4, verse 6, and verses 16 to 19. It reads thus, Behold, the Lord is about to lay waste the world and will make it desolate. This is complete destruction. And will lay bare the surface of it and scatter them that dwell therein. So these people who live on the earth, they're going to be running all over the place trying to get back where they came from. They're going to be scattered. Verse 3. The earth shall be completely laid waste and the earth shall be utterly spoiled. So again, none of these, oh, there was an earthquake in Mexico. No, no, no. The entire earth will be shaken. The entire earth will be spoiled. It will be laid waste. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken these things. The earth mourns and the world is ruined. The lofty ones, which means the prideful people of the earth, are mourning. Verse 6. Therefore a curse shall consume the earth, because the inhabitants thereof have sinned. There are some people who believe that only Israelites can sin. Well, on this day, they're going to be in for a shock, because they're going to be put to death for their sins. Sin is simply doing the opposite of what the Most High said. If the Most High said that men should marry women and women should marry men, then those that do opposite have sinned and their destruction is coming on the day of the Lord. Therefore, the dwellers in the earth shall be poor and few men shall be left. They're going to find out what sin on that day and only those who have been doing what the Most High said shall be left. Verse 16. O Lord God of Israel, from the ends of the earth we have heard wonderful things, and there is hope to the godly. So those who are godly do not need to be afraid of the tribulation, the destruction that is coming on the day of the Lord. Because the Most High is not going to have his army destroy the godly when he sends them to deliver his people from captivity. It continues, but they shall say, Woe, that means destruction to the despisers that despise the law. They are people that despise, that hate the law of the Most High God. And destruction is coming to them in the day of the Lord. Those who say that we don't have to keep the law because we're now under grace. Those who say that the law has been nailed to the cross. Those who say that the law is dead. Those who say that JC, the false god and idol of Christianity, has fulfilled the law so we no longer have to keep it. Those are the despisers of the law and they will be put to death in the day of the Lord. Verse 17. Fear and a pit and a snare are upon you that dwell on the earth, and it shall come to pass that he that flees from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that comes up out of the pit shall be caught by the snare. This is very much like what we read earlier. He who ran from the lion was caught by the bear. He went into his house and was caught by a serpent. There's no escaping. The rich and powerful will think that they've escaped destruction because they've hidden away in their underground bunkers. They may escape the giants, but there is more tribulation to come. In the end, there is no escaping the wrath of the Most High God. For windows have been opened in heaven. This is destruction from above. And the foundations of the earth shall be shaken. Again, the entire earth will be shaken. Everybody's going to feel it. The ground is going to be splitting in pieces and people are going to be falling through and dying. The earth shall be Utterly 
confounded and the earth shall be completely perplexed. People are not going to know what to do with themselves because they've never seen anything like this. This is tribulation. This is destruction. And the giants, the soldiers that the Mosa is going to send, are going to be sneaking into people's houses and killing them in the day of the Lord. Question number five. What should righteous Israelites do in the day of the Lord? Isaiah chapter 26 verses 20 to 21. That's Isaiah chapter 26 verses 20 to 21. It reads thus. Go, my people, enter into thy closets, shut thy door, hide thyself for a little season until the anger of the Lord have passed away. Righteous Israelites simply need to stay home. That's it. We're not going to be touched. Just like in Egypt when the Most High sent all these plagues that destroyed the Egyptians but did not touch the Israelites. In the tribulation, in the day of the Lord, no Israelite will be destroyed at this point. None. Whether they are Israelites who are Muslims, Israelites who are Christians, Israelites who are atheists, it doesn't matter. Israelites are the children of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. We are the ones that were scattered in slavery on slave ships and by other means. We are the ones living in the lands of our captivity. And the tribulation or the day of the Lord is a rescue mission to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Therefore, the Israelites regardless of what we believe, are not going to be destroyed at this point. The earthquake, the fire, the soldiers that are coming to fight are not going to destroy the Israelites. Verse 21, For behold, the Lord is bringing wrath from his holy place upon the dwellers on the earth. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall not cover her slain. So there will be dead bodies everywhere. Question number six. How will the nations be judged in the day of the Lord? So we've already heard about the earthquakes. We've heard of the soldiers coming and killing those who have taken us captive. But there is more to the judgment. Joel chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, and verses 9 to 12. That's Joel chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, and verses 9 to 12. It reads thus, For behold, in those days and at that time, when I shall have turned the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, the expression, when I shall have turned the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem is referring to the rescue mission to deliver the Israelites from the hands of our captors in the tribulation, which is also known as the day of the Lord. It says, I will also gather all of the Gentiles and bring them down to the valley of Josephat and will plead with them there for my people and my heritage, Israel. So the Most High, after sending his army to destroy the ungodly and the prideful, he is going to call the remainder of the Gentiles to the valley of Josephat. And all Gentiles will have to go to the valley of Josephat, whether they are righteous or not. And the Most High will plead with the Gentiles for his people and his heritage, Israel, who have been dispersed among the Gentiles. And these Gentiles have divided my land. So those people in the land of Israel 
who are actually Gentiles, who have divided his land, they will also have to go to the valley of Josephat, verse 3, and cast lots over my people, and have given their boys to harlots, and sold their girls for wine, and have drunk. This is what happened during the many slaveries of Israel. Our children were given to be prostitutes. Our people were sold for wine. We were just another commodity. But now the Most High is going to plead with the Gentiles for his people and for what they've done to his land. The Most High will call these remaining Gentiles to the Valley of Josephat to fight. That's how the Most High pleads. It's a fight. He is a God of war. None of that John 3, 16 nonsense. Verse 9. Proclaim these things among the Gentiles. Declare war. Arouse the warriors. So he's calling the Gentiles to fight in the valley of Josephat. Draw near and go up, all ye men of war. Beat your plowshares into swords and your sickles into spears. So these Gentiles won't have enough weapons to fight against the Most High. He say, make more weapons. Take your instruments of farming and make them instruments of war. Come up, bring what you got. Let's do this because I'm going to plead with you for my people Israel. It continues. Let the weak say, I am strong. So even the weaklings among the Gentiles, it says, strengthen yourself and come and fight against me. Just like you fought against my people. Gather yourselves together and go in, all ye nations round about, and gather yourselves there. Let the timid become a warrior. Come on, he's a god of war. Verse 12. Let them be aroused. Let all the nations go up to the valley of Josaphat. And again, that includes the fake Jews. For there will I sit to judge all the Gentiles round about. This is judgment day. And the Gentiles are going to be judged for what they did to the children of Israel. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 15 to 16. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 15 to 16, reads thus. For behold, the Lord will come as fire and his chariots as a storm to render his vengeance with wrath and his rebuke with a flame of fire. For with the fire of the Lord, all the earth shall be judged. This is judgment day and all flesh with his sword. That's how the Most High pleads with fire and with the sword. Many shall be slain by the Lord. Many confirm that not everyone will be slain. Although all the Gentiles will be gathered at Josaphat, only the wicked among the Gentiles will be slain. Because when the Most High pleads for his people Israel and asks them to explain what they did to the children of Israel, those who are found to have been wicked to the Israelites will be put to death. But those who have been righteous and kind will be spared. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. That's Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8, and it reads thus. Therefore, wait upon me, saith the Lord, until the day when I rise up for a witness. So the Most High is telling the Israelites who are righteous to be patient, just wait a little while. That day will come soon. He will rise up for witness because my judgment shall be on the gatherings of the nations. So when the Most High has gathered the nations in the valley of Josephat, he will judge these nations. 
to draw to me kings, to pour out upon them all my fierce anger, so the kings of the earth will have to answer for what they did to the children of Israel. For the whole earth shall be consumed with the fire of my jealousy. We serve a jealous God and vengeance will be executed on this day. It's judgment day for the Gentiles. Malachi chapter 4 verse 3. Malachi chapter 4 verse 3 reads thus. And ye shall trample the wicked. Why? Because it's the wicked who will be destroyed on judgment day. The wicked are those Gentiles that the Most High is going to flame in the valley of Josephat. For they shall be ashes underneath your feet in the day which I appoint, says the Lord. Almighty. So there is a day appointed, judgment day, when the wicked Gentiles who destroyed the children of Israel will be flamed. The Most High is going to burn them with fire. Then the Israelites will be able to trample all over them, for they shall be ashes underneath our feet. I mentioned earlier that the purpose of this tribulation on the day of the Lord is that it's a rescue mission. So it destroys evil, wickedness from the earth, but it also delivers the children of Israel from the lands of our captivity. Let's see that again in Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 11 to 12 and verses 15 to 16. That's Isaiah chapter 11, verses 11 to 12, and verses 15 to 16, and it reads thus. And it shall be in that day that the Lord shall again shew his hand to be zealous for the remnant that is left of the people which shall be left by the Assyrians, and that from Egypt, and from the country of Babylon, and from Ethiopia, and from the Elamites, and from the rising of the sun and out of Arabia. So the Most High now is gathering his people from all these countries where we've been scattered. Verse 12. And he shall lift up a standard for the nations, and he shall gather the lost ones of Israel, and he shall gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Wherever we've been scattered, the Most High is going to find us and bring us back together. Verse 15, and the Lord shall make desolate the sea of Egypt, and he shall lay his hand on the river with a strong wind, and he shall smite the seven channels, so that men shall pass through it dry shod. So it will be like when he parted the Red Sea, so that the children of Israel could walk through on dry land. Verse 16, and there shall be a passage for my people that is left in Egypt. And it shall be to Israel as the day when he came forth out of the land of Egypt. So again, the day of the Lord is a rescue mission. All Israelites will be gathered from the lands of our captivity in the day of the Lord. We will be taken to the wilderness. Those who are in Egypt will be able to walk from Egypt to the wilderness on dry land. They will walk through the sea. They will walk through the rivers to the wilderness, just like our forefathers did. Amos chapter 9, verses 9 to 10. Amos chapter 9, verses 9 to 10 reads thus. For I will give commandment and sift the house of Israel among all the Gentiles. So wherever we are among the Gentiles, meaning among the nations, the Most High is going to gather us as corn is sifted in a sieve. So we're going to be separated from the other nations and yet a fragment shall not in any wise fall upon the earth, which means no Israelite left behind. All the Israelites will be taken 
when the Most High gathers us in the wilderness. Verse 10. All the sinners of my people. So this is time now for the judgment on the wicked Israelites shall die by the sword. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. Who say calamities shall certainly not draw near nor come upon us. Now, why would they be saying that? Because they're going to realize that when the giants came, they did not kill any Israelites. They're going to realize that the earthquake did not take their lives. They're going to realize, wait a minute, this thing is for us. This is a rescue mission for the Israelites. So all of those Christian Israelites, Muslim Israelites, atheist Israelites, Christian lights who were happy that the calamities were not coming near them, who were happy that they were being delivered. This is now their judgment. They will be put to death by the sword. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 33 to 38. That's Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 33 to 38, and it reads thus. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord, I will reign over you with a strong hand and with a higher arm and with outpoured wrath. I will bring you out from the nations. So it's saying the same thing. And will take you out of the lands wherein ye were dispersed with a strong hand and with a high arm and with outpoured wrath. Why outpoured wrath? It's talking about the tribulation. This is what happens in the day of the Lord. The Most High comes, he is angry, and he pours out his wrath on the nations and takes out the children of Israel from among the Gentiles. Verse 35, And I will bring you into the wilderness. Of the nations. This is how we know that we're going to all be taken to the wilderness. All the Israelites will be taken to the wilderness. Not one Israelite is going to perish outside the wilderness. Verse 35 again, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations and will plead with you there face to face. Did the Most High not plead with the Gentiles in the valley of Josephat? Did he not kill the wicked among the Gentiles in the valley of Josephat? So now it's judgment day for the Israelites. The Most High is going to plead with the Israelites the same way that he pleaded with the Gentiles. And we know that when the Most High pleads, he's talking about fire. He's talking about his sword. Verse 36. As I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I judge you. This is judgment day. Day and just like the Most High killed, destroyed the wicked Israelites in the wilderness, he will destroy the wicked Israelites in the wilderness a second time in the day of the Lord. Verse 36 again, as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I judge you, saith the Lord, and I will cause you to pass under my rod, and I will bring you in by number. So we are passing, we are being judged. The Most High is going to separate the wicked from the righteous. Verse 38, and I will separate from among you the ungodly. Those Israelites who want nothing to do with the Most High God. Those Israelites who give the glory of the Most High God to the false golden idol of our Christian slave masters. They will be separated. And the revolters, those Israelites who refuse to keep the commandments of the Most High God. Those who claim that they cannot keep the Sabbath day in captivity. 
eternity. Even though the Most High has said it is a perpetual covenant, an everlasting covenant that the children of Israel must keep. The revolters insist that they're not keeping it because the Most High can't tell them what to do. The revolters are also those Israelites who are married to non-Israelites and refuse to repent. They will be separated from the righteous. It continues, for I will lead them forth out of their place of sojourning. So yes, they're going to be taken from amongst the nations, from the Gentiles, just like the rest of us. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, even the Lord. It is not too late to repent. It will only be too late when darkness covers the face of the earth. I implore my people to repent now that you have the opportunity. Zechariah chapter 13 verses 8 to 9. Zechariah chapter 13 verses 8 to 9 reads thus. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says the Lord, two parts thereof shall be cut off and perish. So this is how we know how many Israelites are going to die. The majority are going to die. The remnant has always been the minority. Those who worship the Most High God only and keep His commandments. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will try them as silver is tried. And I will prove them as gold is proved. So the Most High is going to bring the remnant through the fire. The fire is not going to destroy the remnant. And we're going to be tried. We're going to be proven. We're going to be purified. And it continues, they shall call upon my name and I will hear them and say, this is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God or praises to the most high. This is salvation, not that Christian nonsense about believing the false God and idol of Christianity and you shall be saved. No, Christians are not going to be saved. What we've just read about is salvation. Salvation is deliverance from captivity. The Israelites have been enslaved by our enemies. We are scattered all throughout the world. And when the Most High regathers us and removes the wicked from among us, we can consider ourselves saved. Until then, we are not saved. So if you are an Israelite and you want to be saved, return to the Most High God only and keep his commandments. It's the only way to be saved. In conclusion, the day of the Lord is a time of greater tribulation than the world has ever seen. This is when all the enemies of the Most High, including all rebellious, unrepentant Israelites, will be destroyed and the righteous remnant of Israel will be saved. And with that, I say, Shalom. More end time prophecies will be revealed in the upcoming teachings. So, if you find these teachings beneficial and would like to hear more, please like, share, and subscribe.